Okay, fear not, the sky is not falling. We just have a quiz on Friday. We just have a quiz on Friday. Okay, so we're going to go over the homework. This is, believe it or not, this is L1 class. It should be third period. Okay, so looking at last night's homework, we have uh, I'm to find what questions we did. And whoops, right, so we did these here. Looking at last night's homework. So 14, I don't know if we had the answer to that, but that's B. Okay, 16 is up there. 17, let me make this a little bigger so you can see it. Answer to 17 is right there. 18 is right here. 19, uh, I think I said you didn't have to do 19. 21 uh, is going to be this. The rate of a certain change of sector input. Oh, I'm sorry, we didn't have to do 21. Well, go and write those answers down. All right, moving on to number 22. Uh, you just uh, you have the derivative, and it looks like it's just a plug and play question. Um, well, maybe not. Let's see. Passing through the point, find a function f of x passing through the point. Oh, you want to find the function itself. Whoops. I guess you do have to do a little work on 20 uh, or 22. Um, let me, uh, yeah, let's do 22 because I told you to do it and um, you might not have been able to do it. Okay, so. If we have dy dx, which is a differential equation, it's a derivative of something equals this over here. So we want to integrate from both sides, but we want uh, we want to separate things. So okay, we want to separate things so y and x are together. So let me get you on another page here. So we want to separate things so we can uh, we can solve for x and y or f of x. Okay, so let's bring the um, Go back to the original question, sorry. And we're going to bring dx over to the other side by multiplying both sides by dx. Okay, so we have dy equals y minus 2 dx. But we want y's to be together, so we're going to divide both sides by 1 over y, or 1 over y minus 2 dy. So now we have dy dx situation. So I want the integral of both sides, and you know that this integral over here is just going to be an ln y minus 2, ln y minus 2 plus some z value, and uh, dx is just going to turn into x plus some other z value. Okay, so we still want to get y by itself. So let's bring the c's together. So if I add a c to both sides or subtract a c from both sides, it just becomes another c. And that might not make sense to you. If this was a 2 and a 3, it would become a, a 5 or a, a 1. We don't know what it's going to become, so we just put a c. Now you're going to e both sides. And when you e this side, you get y minus 2 equals e to the x plus c. Now we know that by rules of exponents that x times x to the uh, a times x to the b is x to the uh, a plus b. So if we reverse that over here, 
if we reverse this, we're going to get e to the x times e to the c. Well, e to the c is just another constant. It's just a number. So we can write this as c e to the x, y minus 2. Okay. Then we're just going to add 2 to both sides. So we get y equals c e to the x plus 2. And Keegan's probably saying, is this going to be on the quiz tomorrow? Uh, probably not. Uh, so the question said, if I can find the question, sorry. Uh, the question said, passes through 0, 6. So 0, 6, it passes through 0, 6. So when x is 0, y is 6. We can go ahead and, and put that on here. Uh, 6 equals c e to the 0 plus 2. When we solve this, we get 6 equals c plus 2, and c would have to equal 4. So if we rewrite the original question, y equals c, we know c is 4, e to the x plus 2 would be our answer. And I believe that's what was the answer up here, 4e to the x plus 2. 4 e to the x plus 2. So that was a little bit tricky. Let me zoom out so people can see it. Kind of went fast there. Um, so the first thing I did was uh, I got y and dy together. So the first thing we did was get y and dy together. So I multiply both sides by dx. Then I moved the y over by division to get it over here to do an ln situation. And then from there, it's just, uh, so it, when I integrate, I get an ln situation. So I have the ln, bring the c's over, e both sides. Okay, use the rule of, use the rule of uh, exponents here. And then uh, you're going to... Uh, Make put that c the c value is going to come in front of e by the rule of exponents over here. And we do a little bit more work to get move things around to get our answer. Uh, this point on here, this is an initial value. It's like gives you a value of x or a value of y. So we fill those in, to figure out our c value. Y equals four e to the x plus two. Okay. So scrolling, or I'm sorry, going to the other questions. Again, the sky's not falling. It'll be okay. The number of fruit flies increases. So this is this answer here. Let me make it a little bit bigger so Zeke can see it in the back. Um, there you go. And this one is A. I haven't checked all these answers. There could be a typo. 25 is B. Uh, Kaylee, what'd you get for 26? Uh, did you say B? Yes, that's correct. And 26. Okay, moving to 27. Oh, nope, don't have to do 27. So, um, if you have questions on particular ones, uh, they're pretty much all done the same way. We can have somebody come up in class and explain it um, on the board if you uh, if that helps. Um, we will have a quiz tomorrow and the quiz will look something like this one here. Hopefully it's going to let me see it. Um, so let me pause for a second. Okay, so here's the review for the quiz tomorrow. Uh, you have money in account at 10% interest, so R is point, uh, one. It's compounded monthly, so that's 12 times per year. Uh, the nearest to the nearest year, how many? How long will it take for your money to double? So if we start with uh, the amount equals the principal times one plus r over n times per year, n t, and use this formula, we can fill in the values. So your amount you want to double. So you want 2p, um, well, let's just write it, 2p, I want my p to double, uh, so 1 plus r, 0.1 over 12 to the uh, 12 
times t, and I don't know what t is. And my p value is going to go away because I can divide both sides by that. Then I have to deal with 12t in a power. So I'm going to ln both sides. It's going to double. When I ln this side, I'm going to get 12t ln 1 plus 0.112. Um, and then I'm going to have to use my calculator to solve it. So let me get my calculator. Okay, so first I'm going to bring everything over. So ln 2 divided by, we've got to get rid of the 12 and this. So we're going to divide it by 12 times ln 1 plus 0.1 over 12. So be careful with this because it's going to uh, be careful with this because on your calculator it might not come out very nice. So I'm going to go ln 2, ln 2, oops, that out, ln 2 in parentheses. That whole thing divided by parentheses 12 times ln parentheses 1 plus 0.1 divided by 12 and parentheses and parentheses should get me an answer um, of 6.96 let me check my answer here and it's about seven years is correct okay so uh, that's how you do that one again you can pause the video and look up on the board and your the hardest part about this is probably putting it into the calculator so you will have to know this formula for the quiz tomorrow moving on to the next question a uh, certain radioactive isotope uh, has half of approximately 1700 a half, sorry, has a half-life of approximately 1,700 years. So we're setting up half-life. Uh, what's left or the amount that's left is based on what you start with. I think I used an S before or whatever your C value is, your starting value. A half to the power of T over 1,700. And uh, how many years to the nearest whole number would the required Required would be required for the given amount of the isotope to decay to 60% of the amount. So 60% of the amount, well, that's 0.6 of the original. And this is kind of like the last question. So now you're dealing with a half, it's an S, not a 5. And uh, T to the 1700. Okay, so we're going to uh, get rid of the S. So I got 0 0.6, that's 60%, equals 1 half. My power is T to the 1,700. Okay, you're going to ln both sides, so ln 0 0.6, again, just like the other one. This is going to turn into T divided by 1,700, uh, ln 0.5. Okay, going to bring that ln 0.5 over by division, so you got ln 0 0.6 divided by ln 0.5. Yes, Zeke, you could write that a different way. Um, then we're going to multiply by set that answer by 1700. And we're going to get the calculator out and see if that works. So we have, uh, and watch your uh, signs here. Um, for your log. So ln 0.6. You might want to just hit enter here. Divided by ln 0.5, enter, looks like that, times 1720. Let's put the right numbers in. I got 125284. 12284. Uh, yes, 1253. Okay, years. So tomorrow you're going to have to show this work uh, to get your answers correct. Now we're doing a bacteria colony under ideal conditions in the laboratory, so the, that the population increases exponentially. That's y equals ce to the kt. Okay. At the end of two hours, there are 5,400 bacteria. So 5,400 equals some c value. You don't know what we start with. E to the k, and then it's two hours times an hours. At the end of four hours, there's 48. 600 zero, zero equals C E to the A to the fourth. 
Okay. Um, so we want to know what C, the C value is. All right. So if we, uh, we could do this a couple different ways. Um, we want to figure out what K and C are, I should say. And how many are present initially. So we have two equations, and we do have two unknowns. Uh, but they're kind of ugly. So why don't we, uh, let's try LNing it. I mean, there's different ways to do this. So if we ln both sides, um, and I actually, I don't know if I want to do that. If I ln that side, I'm not going to be able to bring that down. I could, um, no, let's not do that. Let's try something else. Okay, so this gets a little tricky. You have to, um, you have two equations, two unknowns. Uh, what I would do is solve for C and then go from there. If you solve for C on one side, you get 5400 divided by E to the K times 2. Uh, that equals C. And then the C also equals, if you solve for C on the other one, so I solve for C on this one, I bring the 48600 divided by um, e to the k times 4. Okay, so now you have a proportion. You can just cross multiply and then figure out what your k value is. Then you use your k value to figure out your other values. So if I cross multiply this, e to the 2 times, or sorry, 4k, I'm going to cross multiply this one, 5400 times e, and then we'll put 4k, equals 48600 times e to the 2k. Um, then I can just divide both sides by numbers on this side, and e's on the other side. Okay, when you cross multiply, you get uh, 54 divided by 486, if I reduce a little bit. And then e to the 2k divided by e to the 4k is e to the negative 2k. So when I, I, I have to solve for uh, k, I have to solve for k, so I, uh, okay, so um, you have to solve for k still, so we're going to ln 54 over 486 equal to negative 2k when you ln. And then k is going to equal um, the ln of 54 over 486 divided by negative 2. I paused because I thought I was going to get a negative number, but it's just it's fine because I'm going to get a negative ln here. So you're going to take uh, the ln of 54 divided by 486, and you're going to divide that by negative 2, and your uh, k value becomes 1.098. Okay, so that's your k value. So then you go back to your original problem, so let's call it 1.10, or 1.1, let's call it about 1.1. Okay, so go back to your original problem up here and put in your k of 1.1, so you have 5400 equals c e to the, I'm going to say 1.1 times 2, and so we're going to divide 5400 divided by the e value, so I can e to the 2.2, enter, and you get about c equaling about 600. That checks with my answer. So this is a tricky question. Let me just review it again real quick. Um, 
you set up your two values, you uh, you get the you get C by itself. So this is one C and this is the other C. Set them equal to each other. Cross multiply. Um, solve for K. You're getting the E's together and taking the LN to get your K value. K is approximately 1.1. Then I go back to the beginning and I plug it in and I get my C to be equal 600. Okay, the last two questions. A certain population is growing at a continuous rate. So the population triples every 16 years. How long does it take for the population to double, though? So we know that 3C equals C E to the KT. It triples, I'm sorry, K16. So it triples in that situation. So 3 equals E to the K16. LN both sides, LN3 is going to equal K16. K is going to equal LN3 over 16. So then you're just going to take that and put it into your equation what you want it to double this time. And again, the C's will cancel. So I can just put 2 times, or 2 is going to equal E to the K. I'm sorry, K, I know what K is. LN3 over 16 times 16. Oh, that's nice. It will cancel. 16s will cancel, right? And we left with 2 equals E ln 3, and something went wrong here, I believe. No, the 16s won't cancel. I'm sorry. I just messed up. Um, let me pause for it to regroup on this one. Okay, I see what I did wrong. I don't know that T is 16. I, I'm sorry. T, I, I want to know what T is. So what is T in this situation? Because that just was not working out for that case, which is good at out because I put it in the wrong way. So we want to know what T is. So again, LN both sides. And you get LN3 over 16T. And then T is going to equal this ugly answer of LN2 divided by this LN3 over 16. And let me get the calculator out. That's going to get me uh, LN2. Enter. Divided by uh, LN3. Um, enter. And then divide that again by 16. Should be the right answer. Um, T equals 0.039. That's not the right answer. I did the calculation wrong. So uh, let me do that again. So ln2 parentheses divided by parentheses ln3 and the parentheses divided by 16 and parentheses. Hopefully that gives me yeah, it gives me a different number. It gives me 10 years. So it would take 10 years for uh, 10.1 years for the population to double. And that makes sense. Okay, good. All right, again, you can pause the video, you go back and pause, and have people write this down. That's fine. I'm looking at the next one. Suppose the amount of oil pumps from an oil well will decrease at a continuous rate of 10% per year. When will the, when will the uh, well's output fall to 30% of its present level? Okay, I had to think about this question a little bit. Sorry about that. Um, so you have a continuous situation, so it's y equals c e to the kt. But in this case, y equals c e k is negative 0.1 because it's decreasing at 10% per year. Okay, so if you want 30%, you're just going to do 0.3 equals. And you're doing 0.3 of c. Let me just write it. 0.3 of c equals c e. So negative point one C. The C's cancel. So you just do point three equals E to the negative point one T. Then you ln point three both sides and divide that or and so you're gonna get negative point one T. Then divide both sides by point one or negative point one, and that's gonna get you twelve years. Okay, so 
So the sky is not falling. We have a quiz tomorrow. It'll be like this with different numbers. So make sure you know how to do it. Have a nice day. God bless you. Peace.